Hi, my name is Ayuda Gulenkozi, and I'm going to be talking to you about our paper on institutional partnerships as a community geography method for improving diversity and inclusion in the geosciences. So diversity and inclusion in the geosciences is something that Julia and I are particularly interested and invested in because we are both Latinas in the geosciences. And we don't usually see other Latinas or other people of color in the geosciences, and we began to wonder about this. Around this time that we first started discussing this, we received this article noting that diversity has not improved in the past 40 years. And as a result of that first article, we started looking into literature finding that this is an ongoing issue persisting in the face of a conversation surrounding it for the past 20 years. So we began looking into the literature even further and found that that conversation has seen that the geosciences is the least diverse in the sciences. There has been little to no progress on diversity and inclusion. And there are many reasons offered for this, including the leaky pipeline um, as a result of suffering from losses in recruitment, retention, and placement stages, a lack of focus on race and ethnicity until recently because it was primarily focused on gender parity, and a lack of positive views on women, especially minoritized women, which leads to an unequal distribution of professional opportunities, which are crucial for academic advancement. However, the pipeline model itself is also considered problematic, mostly because of its lack of focus on the structure of academia itself, which has less value on service mission. And so, to simply add more people from minoritized backgrounds to a system that has actively been created to prevent their inclusion does not create an environment that will retain and value, value them, and that's the key issue we see with the pipeline model. However, we also see community geography as a successful methodology for addressing diversity and inclusion in the geosciences due to its many methods for engaging with the community and supporting community goals and its focus on different opportunities for how to do exactly that. Uh, community geography also values facing the power structures that created inequality in these communities in the first place and offers different methods to the communities for making sure that that ad addressing of the situation happens. Two specific goals of community geography that we feel are particularly salient to our paper include creating reciprocal relationships between university and community partners and a negotiation of collaborative knowledge production and shared power. However, we also see that there is a lack of actual discussion on the actual partnership structure between the academic institution and the community partner such organizations in the literature, which is what we seek to, uh, a gap that we seek to fill with our paper. As mentioned previously, uh, Julia and I are both veterans in the geosciences, but here's some context on our journey to the geosciences and why we considered a camp as an important avenue for improving diversity. We both have prior camp experiences we believe were crucial for bringing us into the geosciences. These were local institution-based concerted efforts to incorporate students from various backgrounds aimed at recruiting underrepresented students into the sciences and they gave us the opportunity to have activities that were project-based and guided by actual geoscientists who also provided mentorship during the camp. Our own experiences were key to informing our own successful creation and implementation of GCAMP itself. This event was completely graduate student led with a diverse representation of geoscientists available from our volunteers of the graduate students. Most resources were already in existence, donated or at minimal cost to the departments and other institutional organizations who were partnered in the creation of this camp. Ultimately, the camp was very successful. Um, we had 30 participants and they had a lot of opportunities to engage with the geosciences in a variety of ways and ultimately really enjoyed the camp as you can see here from all of this different feedback um, of their positive experiences. So the timeline of the development of this camp begins with that original inspiration of this topic from that first article, us pitching the camp and then developing an IRB so we could test the effectiveness of the camp. And in the meantime, we were visiting the communities that we wanted to be recruiting in, participating in community events that would allow us to help generate interest in the geosciences to improve our recruitment, which was ultimately so successful, we were able to receive funding and approval for the holding of our camp. 
And so then we actually held the camp and it, like I mentioned, was a great success. For the rest of this presentation, I will be focusing on this part of the timeline so we can discuss the importance of developing institutional partnerships and a reproducible model for doing so. So our research questions for this paper were, what institutional partnerships were most successful in directly impacting student learning and engagement? How did the themes we identified lead to a successful camp in comparison to other camps? And how do we establish ongoing institutional partnerships focused on student interests, needs, and opportunities? To answer these questions, we had a multi-step process that can be seen here with this model of our methods, showing that we took our own experiences to inform the design of our camp, then later identified key themes to the success of all three camps. Then we used those themes to evaluate four other camps that had the same diversity and inclusion in the geosciences goals and were currently ongoing. Here are the four themes with the subthemes or thematic actions that could be seen in the camps. So for example, access uh, includes providing cost-free or limited cost opportunities for the participants. Transparency includes highlighting and educating students about geosciences careers while also being honest about the lack of diversity and efforts to improve that lack. Opportunities and outcomes include offering representation of minoritized people in the geosciences. And relationships includes gaining community support of local institutions for that institutional partnership. And these were crucial to the development of a partnership, all four of these themes. So um, our findings when we evaluated the different camps were across the camps informing our institutional partnership model are available here. So the results of that evaluation are available here. Um, we found patterns across the camps informing that model. So you can see that there were patterns by theme of what actions were most important. So again, um, with access, there was a clear pattern. All of these camps were cost free. With transparency, almost all of these camps made sure to have a discussion of diversity and barriers in institutions with students, opportunities and outcomes. Um, They've focused on offering representation of minoritized scientists and hands-on engaging activities. And in terms of relationships, it was really important for the community support of local institutions to um, be available and justifying the cost of the camp. So um, we also found something else that there appears to be a change occurring over time with the camps. Um, as they become embedded in the community, they move away from an original pipeline model to a structural change model um, because of that embedding in the community. So um, we can see this here with theme three, opportunities and outcomes um, of 3.3, developing community support for the field of geosciences. So really going into the community and actually connecting and explaining what the goals of this, these camps were. We found that um, the older camps do this, such as GEMS, they didn't originally realize there was a need for transportation from their for their participants, and that developed over time um, as they continued to work with the community. And we suspect that BEST and STEAM Activated will also develop a um, structural change model and move away from a pipeline model if they continue to, to be successful and connect with the community. So our model can be conceptualized through this image. There is a toxic river made impossible by the poison of racism, exclusion, sexism, and other biases. On either side of the river, there are two institutions, institution A being the academic institution and institution B being the community. These two institutions want to work together and have built a bridge to make this possible. However, there is no trust between them because of the history, so the bridge is locked on both sides of the river. The only way to open these gates is to have all four themes or keys to unlock it. With all four themes, the gates can be permanently unlocked and the bridge freely open, symbolizing a sustainable institutional partnership. So, in conclusion, to create actual change regarding diversity in the geosciences with community geography methods, academic institutions need to be transparent. They need to build relationships with the community that prioritizes the community's needs and interests. And they need to be willing to change the institution itself or else we will never be successful at increasing diversity in the geosciences. So thank you so much for listening. 
and I'm happy to answer any more questions that you may have. Uh, Julia is also happy to receive questions too. Thank you.